Welcome everyone. My name is Lisa Longhofer. I'm the executive director of the Gray Muzzle Organization, and we are so excited that you are here with us today to um, hear and see Elizabeth Johnson talking about the personalities of our aging dogs and how we think about them in relation to traditional Chinese medicine's five elements. So before we get started and before I introduce Elizabeth, I just wanted to introduce my colleagues, Amanda Grant and Laura Merrick. We'll be fielding questions from you. Um, we'll leave some time at the end for Elizabeth to answer questions. You can type your questions into the Q&A box um, or the chat if you're joining us on Zoom or if you're joining us on Facebook, you can enter them in the comments section. Um, if you're on Zoom, you will also see in the chat a copy of the presentation that you can download and follow along. Um, and we just really are excited to, to share this presentation and I know I'm, I'm looking forward to, to learning a lot and having a good time. Um, before we start and before I introduce Elizabeth, for some of you who may be new to Gray Muzzle, I just wanted to say a few words about us. We are focused on senior dogs. We provide funding and other resources to animal welfare organizations across the country. We just awarded $705,000 in grants to 78 um, shelters and rescues in the United States and also in Canada. It's a, a new record for us, so we're really excited about that achievement. And we also provide resources to the general public. So this webinar series is part of that effort to, to educate people about the care and well-being of their senior dogs. So with that, I am delighted to introduce Elizabeth Johnson, who will be presenting. Um, she has been working to promote the health and wellness of small, large, and exotic animals, as well as wildlife, for more than 30 years. She has done equine and canine body work and rehabilitation on competitive and companion animals, managed and solved nutritional issues and environmental effects, and use complementary modalities to partner with veterinary medicine providers. She works from a place of deep clinical understanding, empathy, and compassion to find the health of each animal while promoting well-being in the physical, spiritual, and emotional, emotional realms of all involved. She is a TEDx speaker, author, animal empath, mentor, and joyful dog lover. And I have watched your, your TED Talks, Elizabeth, and I, I have certainly enjoyed them. And I'm just really excited that um, you're going to be sharing your wisdom and your passion for senior dogs today. So with that, I will turn the floor over to you. So welcome. Thank you, Lisa. And thank you, everyone at Gray Muzzle for all the wonderful work you do. It's, it's really amazing. And it's a, a pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, and hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. So we're going to go ahead and get started because I have a lot to talk about today. So um, I'm going to remove the boxes here. Hold on one moment. That's OK. There we go. Oop. Um, let's see. There we go. OK. So. Today we're going to be do um, look at understanding the personalities of aging dogs with traditional Chinese medicine's five element theory. The five element theory of traditional Chinese medicine was developed about five thousand years ago, and we want to look at um, the one asset that is really fun to look at, um, and the which is uh, personality. Um, there's many aspects we use to assess and balance for animals and, of course, uh, the human practitioners use. Um, but the one that I really like is the personality. It's just fun and interesting, and it filters out into your life in, uh, in big ways. So we're going to look at the deeply embedded traits, the wants and needs, the stressors, and the supportive therapies of each dog element. And then we're going to look at our elder dogs, and I'll suggest some easy practices to help balance and support the elder dog's wants and needs. 
And we're also going to look at how to support your relationship with each dog element. When we support the dog and the relationship, we support you. Now, remember, the five element theory was originally developed for humans. So you may see some of these traits in yourself and others. Be kind and gentle with that. So let's connect the dots. Um, what can the five element theory gift you and your dog? One thing is an understanding of what's inside this furry black box. We are always um, wondering that, all of us practitioners and, and many people who have animals, what's inside the furry black box? Um, the other is it can be a powerful tool for understanding behavior patterns and relationships. We can gift you simple lifestyle measures to support both your dog and your relationship. And just a few FYIs, all animals and humans have all five elements, but one or two predominant elements will show themselves strongly. These element cycles are often seasonally related as well, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> Um, I have to say that this interpretation is not meant to diagnose or treat, but can help us create relationship, harmony, and well-being in our home. So let's have some fun. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, we're having a little problem with my, my clicker. Hold on one moment. There we go. Um, so our first element is the wood element. And we start in the spring uh, with a cycle. So this animal is a spring animal. And um, their archetype is the army sergeant or an upper le level competitor. Their strengths are athleticism, competitiveness, leadership, and they're a very, very, very fast learner. And their emotional defaults are anger, frustration, aggression, and impatience. <clears throat> so when we talk about spring for these animals, I get a, a vision of, of spring where um, everything is popping out of the ground, out of their root structures, and just growing and expanding and moving forward. These animals are like that. They just are expansive. They're unflappable. They're unflinchable. They are incredible athletes and working dogs. And, um, and spring is just their time and their, their, their best performance time typically. <clears throat> but overall, they perform incredibly no matter what. Um, the organs associated with them are liver and gallbladder. And we associate organs in this um, for assessment um, in an, on an energetic scale. So it's not necessarily the specific organ or liver or gallbladder. Um, it's actually the energetics of that. And that's how we work when we do acupressure or acupuncture um, on these animals. So, <clears throat> so think of it in an energetic perspective as, as opposed to worrying, oh no, my old dog's gonna get a liver problem um, because that's not the case how it works basically is chronic imbalances can manifest in the body. And that's what the Chinese practitioners have discovered many, 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 many moons ago. And so um, over time, things can happen if there's chronic imbalances. And the goal of this PowerPoint presentation is to learn how to not have those imbalances, how to manage them when they pop up, because they will pop up and how to move forward in a good way to try to eliminate any stressors on them. <clears throat> so the time for these animals is 1 to 3 a.m. I like to talk about the time on this uh, element, especially uh, for old dogs. So older dogs slow down and um, the liver can get congested because when you move and these dogs are, <clears throat> pardon me, all movement based animals, they're very, it's very important to their bodies, um, the wood elements. And um, when, they, when they get older, they slow down. So what happens is the blood flow does not pump through the liver as much and as fast. So the cleansing of the liver, uh, 
in the blood doesn't happen as well. And this time between one and 3 a.m. is when the liver actually does all of its work. I mean, it's working always in our body, but it, it does over 500 functions between one and 3 a.m. So um, if your older dog has slow down and the liver gets congested, they may be just wide awake, waking you up with their nose or, you know, talking to you at your bedside at night between one and 3 a.m. And that's a little clue like, oh, maybe we need to visit, you know, my, my canine herbalist and get some herbs and kind of get this liver going. Or maybe I need to um, do more frequent exercise for this animal. So, um, so that's really important. And on the human level, so you can relate to that, if you've ever gone out and had a really nice dinner and you drank too much wine or you ate too much fatty food and you woke up at one to 3 a.m., that's why, because your liver is so busy trying to clean everything up from all that fun you had. So um, just, just a thought there, um, also hormonal women, um, so we'll see this sometimes in, uh, in dogs and, um, as well. Um, the hormone functions are being um, facilitated by the liver at that time frame too. So that's a, a really important time when we often wake up and we go, oh my God, why am I wide awake at 2 a.m.? Um, well, that's why. So a little bit of explanation on that there. Um, their sense organs are their eyes and their sense is sight. These, these animals have incredible sight and they use it. And that's part of what makes them an extremely good competitor. Um, their coat color is often brown and black. Their issues are tendons and ligaments, um, eye issues and muscle tension. And the tendon and ligament and muscle tension is very understandable with athletes, period. So, so we're going to move to wants and needs first. So these dogs have um, specific wants, and those wants are movement, variety, and competition. They will get bored with the same thing over and over again, and they love to compete. Um, the needs are clear boundaries from their human partner, which is extremely important. Um, so think again about spring and think about that expansiveness and all that energetic um, flow that's going out and it's just, it's just spreading out everywhere. And if we give these animals clear boundaries, then they can become the true athletes and competitors and working animals they, that, that they need. Those boundaries are essential. Boundaries are not bad for animals, especially the wood element. Um, they are important to actually help them become who they are and to not imbalance them. They need boundaries. They want boundaries. And working with a really good trainer that recognizes that in the animal um, and, and, you know, teaches you how to create loving, um, fun boundaries for them uh, is, is really what you need to do if you have a younger animal uh, uh, like this. And the older animals need their boundaries too. That does not go away. These traits are ingrained in these animals, um, these element traits. So think about uh, your elder animal as we walk through this and, um, and uh, you, that'll be really helpful because they don't go away. <laughs> so, um, okay, so other needs are movement. We know that, uh, variety, challenge, and gentle kindness. These, these wood elements, when they're done, they love the kindness. They just, they so appreciate it and they're so proud of themselves and they want you to be proud of them too, so. Um, and stressors, let's move into that. So stressors imbalance the animals. Um, and so that's why we're gonna talk about those because we want these animals balanced. Um, the stressors are inconsistent, excuse me, inconsistent rules and boundaries. So rules and boundaries sort of overlap, they flow together. Um, you know, we've said enough about that, um, boredom. This is not a dog that you can go to an eight, uh, an eight hour job and leave him alone in the house. He's going to make his own job in your house and you may not like it. Um, response to stress. 
uh, is frustration, impatience, and anger. Um, stress balancers are consistent boundaries. They're clear leadership. They're challenging and varied work. That's what these animals love and they thrive on. Um, the gentle kindness and soft praise. I've watched uh, working dogs, police dogs being trained. Um, I've watched many, many, many competitive wood animals. And the, the best trainers and handlers for these dogs give them this soft praise when they're done. And they love it. They, it, you can actually see the, the praise come out of their heart. And it's just so genuine and so soft. And these animals just eat it up and it, it drives them forward even more in their competitions. So they really appreciate soft praise and it, it does have to be genuine as with all our dogs. So supportive therapies for this animal are massage. Obviously an athlete is uh, using muscles and um, tendons and ligaments a lot. Um, acupressure to keep them balanced. Swimming is a really good one for them um, in their off time because it's, it's an exercise and it's movement, but it's just allowing them to just swim and, you know, non weight bearing. So it's helping to stretch all the tendons and ligaments and muscles out. So it's a really good one to inter interject. And it's great for the older wood dog. I can't say that enough. Um, that is a really pivotal one for them. Um, movement of any sorts is a supportive therapy for these animals and adjunct herbal support. And the reason I use herbal specifically with these animals is in the spring, um, the herbs just are popping up. That's their vitality time. That's the time when the herbs are, are like these animals. They're vital, they're expanding, they're growing, and they're just, you know, moving all this energy out. So they seem to dovetail really well with herbal support. It's, um, it's a wonderful one for them uh, specifically. Um, enhancing your relationship with them. Stay present, clear-headed, and fully engaged when working with wood dogs. That is very, very important. Maintain solid boundaries and competent leadership. Do not use force. It will backfire on you with these animals. Our life lesson, stay clear headed and fully connected to avoid power struggles. So here's our old wood dog and his stressors are gonna be boredom, lack of movement and physical limitations. Those pop up with these older wood dogs often because they have possibly been athletes or tried to be athletic, even if they weren't involved in, in sports or working dog uh, things. And they've, they just use their body to the limits. And so they do uh, can have some physical limitations and that is a stressor for them. They wanna go, they, it wreaks havoc with their, their whole being. Um, response to stressors is grumpiness, frustration, stiffness, obviously, and apathy. They will get kind of apathetic and shut down. The stress balancers for them are mental stimulation, frequent walks and exercises while tapering duration and increasing frequency. And here's what I <clears throat> always think about that. Duration, long duration exercise for an old dog, stresses the old body. Frequency helps the old body. So if we can shorten the duration, taper the duration down for these dogs for their exercise and increase the frequency, we actually can extend their, their physical body and, it's, and, and not limit its body because if they're doing um, long duration exercise, long walks, um, long play, whatever it might be for this your particular dog, then then they are going to stress the body a whole lot more than just having short frequent exercise. Um, walks in both familiar and new locations. And the reason I say this is 
These do dogs get bored easily, but we also have to bring the sight back into there, their, their sense of sight and their in incredible sight. And what sight does is sight stimulates the brain activity. Um, and it's pivotal to healthy brain function for these dogs. So we can kind of, I believe, slow down some cognitive uh, decline with them um, if we give them new locations and new things to look at. And um, so, you know, vary your, vary your walks if you can from familiar to new locations. It will really help on that site aspect. Um, games, they love games. They love nose work. Many of these have been prior uh, scent work dogs or nose work dogs. So you can still maintain that till their last day practically. And I've done that with my own animals where they just love going and hunting for that box in the corner with the treat in it, you know? And so you just simplify it down and keep that rolling. Um, I think for every old dog, that is a lovely, lovely thing to do uh, to keep them just feeling good about life and having fun. Um, farm dog competitions are kind of hot things now. And so you can maybe find some of those for your old wood dog. They're going to love that. Uh, massage is good for them. Uh, acupressure is a wonderful stress balancer and gentle play. Even when your old dog is very, very old and on the floor, if you can get down on the floor with them and just you know, maybe roll the ball between their legs and have them roll it back to you and roll the ball, you know, just very simple play for them when they can't do a whole lot of anything else. Um, it will, it will increase their, their joy and their, their sense of self and their sense of success. So very important. Um, so your relationship support for the old wood dog is to be patient and kind but still consistent and firm. Take everywhere with you for sight brain stimulation needs and make them feel successful at small things. So next we're gonna talk about the fire dog and that's the party animal diva archetype. These dogs have charismatic magnetism. I made that up and it's a lovely term. Um, these are the dogs that that everyone wants to pet and they just get drawn. They, they're almost like sucked in to touch this dog and to meet this dog. And, and that's a fire dog. They're friendly, they're social, they're playful, they're a fast learner, they love attention and they love to be adored. That is their thing, they want to be adored. Um, their emotional default is to get very ungrounded. So they can just kind of, you know, fly off the ground energetically and mentally and emotionally. Um, they do um, default to reactivity as well. They are a drama queen. That's what we often call them is a drama queen. So if there's some too, too much chaos, excuse me, chaos, and they get too ungrounded, um, then they, they can start to cycle into that re reactivity. And what we call that in Chinese medicine is a disturbance of the Shen. So the Shen <clears throat> is the confluence of the spirit and the mind. It has a lot to do with survival instincts. And a disturbance of the Shen is a very quirky, odd behavior where when it's done, you go, what was that all about? You know, it's just this strange thing. Um, I watched a, a wonderful fire dog doing really well in an agility contest recently. And, and he was just, you know, in the top and all of a sudden he ran over to the judge's table and he wanted to smell the flower base on the table. And that's like a disturbance of the Shen, you know, something was imbalanced in that animal. And it's just, sometimes it's just something quirky that they do. Um, and everybody laughs, you know, and, and they love that too. They love to be the center of attention. Um, so their season is summer. So we're going through the seasonal cycles now. Um, organs are heart, small intestine, pericardium, triple heater, 
Um, so I always suggest to people with their older dogs and they think they're a fire dog predominantly to, um, to make sure they get, you know, always every dog, but particularly these dogs um, get a checkup every six months or a year with your vet, whatever your vet prefers. Um, and, you know, checking heart and pericardium. Um, and it just, it's very important to just kind of keep track of that ticker for them. Their time's 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Um, those are just, you know, usually high activity times for these animals. Um, their sense organ is tongue and their sense is speech. So with the sense organ being the tongue, I have had numerous clients in the last 30 years that have called me and said, why does my dog lick me all the time? And they almost 80% of the time they are fire dogs and they just need to use that tongue. You know, they just, the tongue is a sense organ for them. So they're, they're sensing, you know, not just salt on our bodies, but other things. So um, it's very interesting to watch that over the years and go, oh, they really, that really is a pivotal um, indicator for them. Um, the speech is also an indicator because a lot of these dogs are barkers. And so, um, you know, and they like to talk or they like to kind of grumble with you. Um, but we do have many fire dogs that are barkers. Um, the coat color is often red or white or white combos. And the potential issues are skin disorders, nervous stomachs, heat issues. They do not do heat well and inflammation. So allergies, um, skin allergies, things like that. <clears throat> so the wants of a fire dog are play, social stimulation, adoration, and cuddles. They're so cuddly. They love to be touched. <clears throat> the needs are a grounded owner. So you have to be grounded so your dog doesn't unground because they want to have a constant emotional connection with you. So if you start to unground, your dog's going to unground immediately. They're just going to follow suit. Um, the other needs are feeling love and, um, and touch. They really need touch. Their stressors are overstimulation, busy environments, chaos, being alone or separated from bonded animals or people. That rocks their world. They really like to be with you all the time. Um, and heat, heat is a major stressor for them. Their responses to stress, drama queen, stomach upsets, shen disturbances. Their stress balancers are physical and emotional contact, attention, fun activities, coolness. So find them a nice, cool place. Make sure they have shade if they're outside, um, a cool place to be. Uh, soft words and praise and a grounded person or animal. And we want soft words and praise for these dogs. They love it when you go, yay, and then you burst out and they're happy and they just totally on ground. So if we can and, and sometimes there's good stress, but it still creates stress, right? We all know that. So if you can use soft words and praise as much as you possibly can with these dogs, then we will diminish some of the stress. And every once in a while you could go, yay, good dog, you know? <laughs> so it's hard to do sometimes because they're, they're so full of joy, these animals. Um, supportive therapies are calm touch, such as massage and calming acupressure points. Cooling foods are good for these dogs, such as turkey, duck, rabbit, whitefish. Um, there's a great book by Judy Morgan, and I will show that at the end. Uh, it's Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs, and it talks about um, you know making your own food, et cetera, and what to feed your dog for different temperature ranges that these dogs need. Um, just someone remind me about that. And that would be great. Um, grounding exercises and always ground yourself first. So enhancing relationship, create fun training sessions and be emotionally connected and supportive during training. 
praise lavishly. And I should have written in there, but quietly. <laughs> so take her everywhere, especially on your normal routines and walks where they can be, where she can be adored and feel safe. So she wants that adoration. The more adoration this animal gets, the, the more, um, the happier she will be. Um, our life lesson to learn emotional quietness in the midst of drama. Our old fire dog. So the stressors of an old fire dog are being alone or separated from caregiver. These things don't go away in their life. They just impact them in a different way. Um, lack of social contact and adoration. So even though they're old, they need that social contact and that adoring. Um, heat, lack of fun, chaos, and big household changes. So I have watched so many dogs, um, old dogs, not just fire dogs, but all old dogs um, react uh, to household changes. And, and that usually means moving your home or, um, or changes in family life. Um, and it's very hard and it can't be prevented many times, but there are things we can do to mitigate for that. And um, I write about that in my book. It's um, a really important thing to look at is how to try to mitigate these because we can get a steeper decline when there's stress from household changes. So the fire dogs really show up with this. Um, and the earth dogs too, do too, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, <clears throat> stress balancers give praise for anything and everything. Remember, they love praise. Numerous short adoration walks. So you can think about that, that it now has a title. They need adoration walks. Include in daily life and errands, quiet, fun play sessions or games, in cool areas for rest and share touch often. The relational su relationship support for these dogs are to stay grounded amidst challenges, stay emotionally and physically connected and appreciate the joy they give to us and others around them. They are bundles of joy. The earth dog is, archetype is the quintessential caregiver. Their strengths are many. Um, they are kind, gentle spirit, patient, loves everyone, loves touch and comfort, dependable, generous, kid loving, forgiving, great memory, very routine, excuse me, routine based, with very accurate internal clocks. Their emotional default is worry and obsession. And they do obsess. I have one in our household and when he gets worried, he, or if he plays too hard or too much, he gets obsessive. <laughs> so it's interesting to watch. Um, the season for them is late summer. So in the five element theory, um, they needed five seasons. So they split summer into summer and late summer. So these are late summer animals. Um, the organs are spleen, pancreas, and stomach. And in the five element theory, we say spleen stomach, but we know that pancreas is included in with spleen. Is with spleen. In Western medicine, it's a separate, total separate entity, but in Chinese medicine, the spleen and the pancreas uh, work together and, and we consider them um, partners. The time is 7 a.m. and to 11 a.m., a more active energetic time for these dogs. These dogs are usually uh, not that active. They don't need a lot of activity. Um, sense organ is mouth and the sense is taste. So these dogs are major foodies. They are just, they love to eat and they love anything and everything. And um, so it makes sense their sense organ is the mouth. Their coat color is often yellow, tan or cream or any color that looks chubby. 
sorry for that, but I had to put that in because they do get chubby and um, in, in they look at food and they get chubby. So uh, that's one of our stressors and something we need to work on uh, controlling. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, potential issues, digestive upset, dental issues, growths and fatty tumors, weight gain, gas, bad breath, stifle injuries, and that and high end weakness due to weight. Um, stifle injuries uh, are common because of the weight, but also um, uh, the spleen and stomach runs right down the lateral and medial side, the inside and outside of the stifle. So when there's an imbalance in the system, we can have a weakness there. So the earth dogs wants food, number one, connection comfort, praise, recognition. They love to be recognized when they do something good. They just puff up. Um, love and family. The needs, a routine-based lifestyle. Remember, they have an incredible clock and they, these dogs thrive on routine. So especially when we get to the old dog, and I'll probably say this again, routine is really um, pivotal for them to stay balanced. Touch uh, is one of their favorite needs and peaceful home atmosphere. They do not do well with um, dissension in the household or a lot of yelling or stress. Um, they really they're the warriors. So we always have to remember that they worry and they do kind of sink away and, and get, you know, very worried when, um, when anything goes on in a household. Um, sometimes that can be the main cause of imbalance. Another need food. Surprise, surprise. Um, their stressors are lack of routine, complicated requests, and expectations of mental quickness. These dogs have a great memory, an incredible memory. However, they are slow, tend to be slow learners. Not always, um, because they're food-based. They, it depends on how much, how many treats you give them, but, um, but they, they don't, it takes them a while, but they will remember everything you taught them six years later, you know? And so, um, it's pretty, pretty amazing. Their response to stress is stubbornness, worry, lack of confidence, and apathy. Stress balancers touch sincere praise. They can tell when you're not praising them properly. Um, slow, fun activities, peaceful environment, comfort, Animal and children buddies, they love that. They need to have that. Um, or they don't, they kind of need to have it. I mean, they really makes a huge difference in their world. Um, and weight management is a stress balancer. For supportive therapies, touch is a big one for them. They love to be touched. Uh, diet consideration is a supportive therapy. Low household stress is a supportive therapy for them. Enhancing relationship, you should be supportive and patient for slow and steady steps towards a lifetime of dependability and love. These are very loyal, dependable animals. Our life lesson, slow down, be grateful and notice gentleness, be friendly. Our old earth dog, stressors are being alone or separated from their family members, lack of routine, household changes or stress, inconsistency in feeding times. So the same as the, the younger dogs, but um, a little more impacting for the animal when they're older. Stress balancers, spend quiet time with them doing nothing. Just sit with them outside, staring at the wind in the trees or whatever it might be. And while you're doing that, give them some belly rubs. They love belly rubs. They're all about the stomach, right? So, um, so give them belly rubs. It's their favorite place. Um, keep feeding 
and exercise on a regular routine. So keep that routine. Healthy low calorie treats. Praise for every effort to exercise or move as they age. Because remember, they love the praise. And if you praise them every time they, they make the effort to get up and exercise, even though they don't want to, then they will just puff right up. And they'll, if you do it on a routine, a regular routine, they will engage in it with you. And of course, if you have treats in your pocket too. Um, <clears throat> relationship support. Eliminate or mitigate any potential situations for worry. Appreciate and support its gentleness and friendliness and give that back always. Spend quiet time with him daily and be routinely consistent with this and all his aging needs. Train him early with ramps and slings so he will allow help when he needs it. Remember, they're not fast learners. So if you can train them, they, they often will, because of their weight, possibly have weak kind ends as you know, when they're older. So if you can train them early with the ramps and slings, and this goes for every dog, but particularly these dogs, um, then they will remember and it will be easy to do that with them uh, to keep them integrated in life as long as you, you see fit. The metal dog, the archetypes, the librarian for this dog. Um, the strengths are they're extremely intelligent, methodical, sensitive, and have clear-minded focus. Their emotional default is grief and the season is autumn. Organs are lung and large intestine. Lung is often related to grief, lung issues. Um, time, 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. So here's another early riser if they're in balance. So they might be poking you at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and going, hey, I have to go out and go potty because my large intestine is imbalanced. <laughs> so, um, so just thoughts thoughts there if you have that occurring ever and you have one of these type dogs um the sense organ is nose and smell they're great scent dogs these are these are the search and rescue tracker types you know they just have the uh, uh just a a couple more little molecules of scent than uh all the other dogs with their amazing noses the coat color is often gray, white, tan, rusty, and they're almost always lean and muscular. Not always, but that's a pretty common feature for these dogs. <clears throat> the potential issues are skin, respiratory and leg issues, constipation, and immune issues. The metal dog wants to work. He wants to have a purpose. He wants to be respected and he wants to trust his handler. Needs work. Work is a big, these are the working dogs. These are the ones that are, um, you know, out there doing other kinds of work, you know, um, work with a purpose. They really like and need a purpose in their work. It's not a competitive dog necessarily but a, a purposeful dog. Um, I walked into a barn one uh, morning <clears throat> and at the edge of the barn was a deep hole and what was sticking out was a little fast wagging tail and a cast. And, um, and I went, oh, I think that's the trainer's dog. It's a little, it was a little black, oh, excuse me, Jack Russell Terrier. And he had so much purpose. He had been stepped on a, by a horse and he had a cast on his leg, but he was determined to mouse in his favorite mousing spot and get under that barn and get that mouse. And so, so that's the kind of dogs they are. They're, they're just really almost borderline obsessive with things like that. And so she gently pulled him out by the tail and the cast. And um, as I walked out of the barn after treating a couple horses, he was back in the hole again. So, so you, you can't hold them back. They, they really love to work. They love their purposes. 
Um, they also need a calm and quiet atmosphere for work and recovery because they are on all the time. And so they need a quiet place to recover. Um, they need clear training, very important for them. They want to know that their handler is um, clear in their methodology and in their purpose for these dogs. Um, the stressors are commotion, noise, sentimentality, and touch. So they don't like sentimentality. They're just like, yeah, I'll get over that. Um, and, they, and they're not very fond to touch. This is not the dog you can just walk up to and pet, you know, or wants to be petted or is dragging you on the leash to go say hi to someone. These dogs um, have issues sometimes with touch. It's just not important to them. Um, the loss of a bonded handler or animal or their job is a major stressor for them. And that will resort into them having grief. So that loss is they go into a grief cycle and that's a stressor. <clears throat> they internalize stress. They show impatience, irritation, grief, as we just talked about, emotional withdrawal, coughing, skin issues, physical, mental, and emotional rigidity. So those are all the responses that you'll see in this, <clears throat> this animal um, uh, when there is some kind of loss in their life. Stress balancers are quiet time alone, routine, work, correctness from handler. Don't be, don't be fumbling around with your commands with this dog. They, won't, they will not trust you and they won't tolerate it. <clears throat> Supportive therapies often does not desire touch, but in time can be coaxed to accept it, including acupressure or energy work. So acupressure and energy work um, can be uh, light touch. You're only touching one little spot on this animal and you're working on a point. Um, energy work can be hands off. So it's a great way to coax them into any type of massage technique for anybody who's a body worker out there. Um, start with this on these types of dogs doing the acupressure or the energy work, and you'll, you'll get farther along with them on the other needs that um, they may require. Quiet space to recover without noise or chaos and doggy yoga for flexibility. <clears throat> so that's not hard. If you stretch in the morning or you do anything, call your dog over and I almost guarantee they're going to do at least a downward dog and maybe uh, lay down on their side and stretch their legs. So um, and you can teach this dog that as a job because this dog needs a job. He loves to work. So um, you can actually teach them the doggy yoga and pretend it's a job. Um, enhancing relationship, earn his respect and trust by being clear and competent with your training and direction. He bonds deeply to a person he trusts and respects and will be extremely loyal. Be amazingly loyal dogs once, once you hook them. Um, our life lesson do our best to be as competent and committed to training and bonding as this hardworking loyal dog needs. <clears throat> our old metal dog, stressors, lack of order and quiet in the household. Again, that's that peaceful, the peaceful rest time. Boredom, no purpose, no job, major stressors. You can make jobs for them. You can go, Hey, okay, buddy, it's time to go. You know, you get your job voice on. It's time to go over and, and go potty on the neighbor's lawn, you know, or something like that. And you just make everything a job for this dog as much as you can. And he will be, he will feel fulfilled in his older years. Stress balancers, calm atmosphere, quiet place to rest, downgrade work requirements, but give him a job. And you, that could be such as scent work or barn dog competitions. These dogs are nose dogs, remember? So scent work is an excellent, excellent thing to do. You can work with um, a scent work trainer if they hadn't had prior 
to uh, learn how to do it yourself in your home and around your yard, it's really, really uh, pivotal to them being happy and successful in their life. Uh, mental stimulus with gains. Uh, take him everywhere with you. That means you're probably going to work. So that's a good thing. Relationship support. Continue to be clear, quiet, and respectful. And don't over sentimentalize your reactions to his aging. Don't over sentimentalize your reactions to his aging. They don't appreciate that. <clears throat> Um, respect his way of bonding and is slowing down. His loyalty, inner sensitivity, intelligence, and independent nature will guide you in his care. And last we have, but not least, we have the water dog. So the archetype for this one is the empathic one. And many of us call it the four-legged spiritual teacher. <clears throat> Their strengths are, they are extremely sensitive, deep, wise, quirky, devoted, mystical, emotionally sensitive, a teacher and guide, and a pool of reflection for us. Their emotional default is fear. Season is winter. Organs are kidney bladder. Time is 3 to 7 p.m., and the sense organ is the ears and sense is hearing. So they are exceptional at hearing. And I truly believe they hear things that no one hears that on different levels. So they're, they're incredible. Uh, their healing is expansive. Or excuse me, hearing. Um, their coat color, often all black or black and white or brown. Their potential issues, bone, joint issues, bladder, kidney, fertility, and thyroid. We always check thyroid on these animals because that can dovetail in with the adrenal glands that sit on the kidneys. And so when we get an imbalance in one, uh, in the adrenals, we get a balance in the thyroid often. Um, water dog wants connection, trust, peace, an evolution of their human in all ways. They are very invested in, uh, in us and our growth and our learning and our evolution. Needs quiet and peace and a deep connection with their human. One of the deepest dogs you could probably ever connect with. Stressors, emotional insensitivity and dishonesty. So they can read us like the books we are. Remember the empathic one, they are extremely empathic. Um, all dogs are, I truly believe all dogs are empaths, <laughs> but um, I think this one has a, a particular um, consistency about being empathic with what we feel. That's the pools of reflection. Um, chaos. They do not like chaos. They don't like loud noises. And they are like a canary in the coal mine for energetic influence, influences like pesticides, chemical shampoos, cleaners, and power lines. We call them the canary in the coal mine. Uh, more sensitive to those energetic influences than uh, many other animals are. Response to stress. Strange behavior, they can do some pretty strange things. Um, odd physical ailments and panic. And that strange behavior often um, uh, is prior to the panic part. Um, they can be, whoops, excuse me, I'm playing with my, my thing. Um, they can be uh, very close to panic. Remember their emotion is fear. And so that is, um, that's important to consider with these dogs. Catch the panic before it, it, or catch the strange behavior before it turns into panic, excuse me. Stress balancers, maintaining a deep and intimate connection with their human. That's a huge deal for them. Emotional honesty is very important with them. Rest and elimination of energetic disruptions. Supportive therapies. 
uh, energy healing such as Reiki, acupressure, tea touch, animal communicators love these dogs. They have long, long conversations with them. Um, herbal, homeopathic, and Bach flower remedies. So all the energy, energetic healing, um, they really soak it in and it's really, really effective for them. Enhancing relationship. Trust and accept her as your teacher and guide while maintaining good leadership so she can trust you. And our lesson, do not give up on her. Look within yourself. There is a solid teaching she is sharing if you just listen deeply. Water element dogs are, and horses as well, are the most rehomed animals, often having four or more homes before they find the right one. They are very misunderstood, and yet they're amazing, fun, and lovable dogs. Our old water dog, chaos, lack of trust, loud noises, emotional dishonesty, weak hind end, bladder, and kidney issues, all stressors for this animal. Stress balancers, deep connection with handler, honesty, trust, emotional, physical, and spiritual closeness, energy healing and herbs, and lack of chaos. Those are all great ways to keep this dog balanced. And relationship support. <clears throat> I think of reciprocity with all dogs, but particularly with these dogs. The old water dog creates a profound influence in your life and needs to know you are moving along on your inner journeys. They need to feel the same love, trust, and devotion they gave you during your journey with them. Open to and accept their communications in both this life and your dream time. Their spirit will always be watching. So here is my QR code, my website. We have free downloads. Stay in touch for my upcoming books and blogs. And I hope this presentation has given you some inquiry and thoughtfulness into your relationship with your old dogs and a path to follow for their care and their well being. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was so interesting. I saw elements of, um, let me get my video on here, elements not only of my dog, but also of my husband. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's yeah, like a twofer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You never look at life the same way when you learn this. So, yeah. It's true. It's true. So, we have some questions. Okay. Um, see if I can. I had them here. And now, um, Let's see, we have lots of thank yous and people saying um, what great information. Um, okay, so um, someone asked, what is T-Touch? Um, T-Touch was developed by Linda Tellington Jones many, many years ago. And um, she was a, a brilliant, masterful, um, uh, person with touch and she learned different areas on the animals uh particularly it's primarily for animals but we can do it on humans as well um where you can get re re uh, profound responses from just doing simple things like circles and and strokes in these particular areas it's really lovely you can find it everywhere if you um you just Google uh, T-Touch or Linda Tellington Jones, um, then you'll find that all kinds of information and probably a practitioner near you that could teach you some of it. So, and there are books out there on it as well. Great. Um, I did see one question um, while you were speaking about whether or not dogs can be more than one. Um, of the elements. Yes, absolutely. So they can definitely have two predominant ones. And what you'll often see um, is um, in the season, that's why I'm sending you guys with all these handouts, um, in the season for that element, um, then they'll be predominant. So in, 
so let's say they're a wood and a water. That's what my husband is. So in the spring, he's very wood like. And in the winter, he's very water like, you know, he's very, he's in a different framework. So um, also, um, the interesting thing about water animals is they can mimic every one of them at any given time. So they're just they're, they are so empathic about everything in life that they can, they can um, actually take on. So if they're around another person or a dog that has a particular element showing, they'll take on that element. So, um, so they're a little bit different than all the other elements in that they, they empathically mimic <laughs> um, another element. And then, um, of course, during the seasonal, so a very balanced animal will often have all five elements that will show up in those seasons. And when we, um, we as practitioners, when we treat these animals, we kind of look at that and we look at um, what season are we in? What are we, what's showing up for the animal? And so we relate all that into our assessment. I hope that helps. Absolutely. So we have a question, um, what can we do when your wood water dog is losing her sight and hearing? Oh, um, <clears throat> well, um, you can do so for the sight, you can try to keep that sight being stimulated and, and check with this with your veterinarian, of course. Um, uh, but ask them about that because that will help um, help trigger the brain to respond to sight. You know, if, unless it's a very painful condition where they need to be in a dark room or something like that, um, having them look at different things outside um, is probably extremely helpful for them. And again, check with your veterinarian on that. The hearing, um, what I usually tell people with hearing is hopefully in your early years, you train them on hand signals. And so it's never too late if they still have some mm -hmm. hearing to train on hand signals. Um, that's really helpful. Um, so that's your way of uh, continuing your relationship with them. And, um, and as far as treatment wise, you, you know, look through, look through what we have on the handouts and see if something feels right to you in those, um, those balancers um, and these supportive therapies. And then find a therapist in your area that may work with the five element theory. Um, there's a lot of them out there. It's a, it's a really um, a common practice for anyone who does acupressure. And, um, and see if they can then help guide you on that um, because they might, it, sometimes we have to see the dog to, to really see what its needs are. So not the best answer, but I hope that helps. Oh, and somebody is saying about the Judy Morgan book. So here it is, I'm gonna put it on the screen here if I can. It's called Yin and Yang Nutrition for Dogs. And it's um, maximizing health with whole foods, not drugs. Um, and so she's a DVM. She's a wonderful DVM, um, very entrenched in Chinese medicine. And she has all the energetics of food. And, um, and that's, it's a great book. It's just a great book to have on hand, especially for any of you that cook your own meals. So you can kind of, now you can dovetail your element or your seasonal element dog with um, the meals that she suggests in this energetic book. That's a whole nother world, but yeah. Right. Um, someone asked, is it typical for litter mates to share the same type, even with a variant of coat color, fawn and brindle dogs? Yes, brindles are, brindles, yes. They, they, um, they can be many uh, elements, you know, they can, they can kind of walk out in all the worlds there. And um, so the coat color is it, in horses, it's easier 
to really kind of peg them with the coat color. In dogs, we have so much variety now that it's a little trickier. And what you really need to do is base it on their behavior and their wants and needs, as opposed to, um, to necessarily um, uh, looking at coat color. That's, that's kind of a, a helpful indicator, but it might take you down the wrong track if you only look at that. Um, and Valerie asked, what type of practitioner would I look for that treats with these considerations? Um, you would look for a holistic veterinarian. Um, and which considerations, I'm sorry, uh, can, I, can you read that again one more time? What type of practitioner would I look for that treats with these considerations? I think okay. that considers um, elements of Chinese medicine. Oh, okay, okay. So um, uh, you would find an acupuncturist and uh, a veterinary acupuncturist. And um, they are often holistic doctors as well, uh, or holistic veterinarians, excuse me. And um, ask them if they do five element theory. Um, many of the practitioners come out of uh, the Qi Institute in Florida. It's a really good traditional Chinese medicine um, hospital or uh, working hospital. And, um, and they, are, um, they are actually more prone to doing five element and we also have eight element theory. Um, and uh, there is a veterinary acupuncture, um, uh, excuse me, sorry, a veterinary acupuncture um, course for veterinarians uh, that is IBIS. And that's a good one that teaches them almost more Western medicine acupuncture. So they don't get the entrenchment in the traditional Chinese medicine. Um, as much, but they get great points to work on with the animals and do a lot of good. Um, so there's, there's sort of that integrating that into a veterinary practice versus having a holistic acupuncture practice, if that makes sense. So find one that has a holistic acupuncture practice if you want to go that route. Great. Um, and we're a little bit over time, but um, there, we'll just do one more question, and that is, can I assume a Labrador is a water dog? Um, no, maybe a black lab, maybe. My black labs have all been water dogs. Matter of fact, I have one now. And, um, but um, Labradors can also really often be earth dogs. Um, they can also be fire dogs because, you know, so they, they can walk in all the worlds pretty much. I don't see a lot of lab metals, um, but I do see um, a lot of lab earth and some water and, um, and fire. So, yeah, yeah, they like to have fun and they're social and, but they are very caring dogs and, um, and the metal dog has such a specific structure that doesn't really fit with them because Labradors love touch. They love people. They love, you know, they're, that's, they love chaos. <laughs> so, so yeah. All right. Well, I um, really appreciate your time. I appreciate you sharing um, all of this wonderful information. I know I really enjoyed learning about the elements and thinking about, as I said, my dog and my husband and other people in my life, and I'm sure our audience did as well. So thank you very much, Elizabeth, for being here. We really appreciate it. You bet. It was my pleasure, Lisa. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for your great questions. And if there's any more, you can always contact me on my website and, you know, I'll, I will collect your email address and get right back to you with anything you have a question on. So yeah, always Perfect. happy to help. That would be great. That would be great. Um, I'm sure that people will follow up with you individually. So thank you. And okay. Thanks to everybody who joined us today. We appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.